Today is exactly three years since the false North Korean nuclear missile text slash alert in Hawaii, which caused embered panic slash led thousands to seek shelter while anticipating an imminent disaster. Redditors who received that text message, what was it like? How did you react? And how have you been doing since? A guy I worked with said his parents were laying by the pool in Moi when it happened. They were just like, nothing you can do. What better place to be if you gotta go? And just kept chilling by the pool, waiting for the end. Remember the Mayan world is gonna end in December 2012? My students at the time were freaked out. We teachers tried to calm them, but middle school kids. I would have been too tbh. One young lady in particular was really scared so another teacher and I sat down with her and said you know, the best thing to do is to be extra loving to your dad and siblings on Saturday, the day it was supposed to go down, and be together, just hanging out at home together, but of course reminded her that nothing bad would happen. On Monday she said that she made cards for her family on Saturday. She was the sweetest. No shit. You're actually incredible. You gave her the best advice you could, just tell people you love them. Then it might not be as scary anymore. I and my entire family live in Hawaii. I had a family function at my place that day. Despite us all being in the same house I was the only one who actually looked at my phone and noticed it. I thought there's no way this is real, but topped off a GL butt of wine just in case. Hours later everyone was like shit we had a false missile alarm ha? Huh? Question mark? Unfortunately, sounds like a fam might actually perish if it was a real thing. Honestly not a terrible way to go out. Enjoying a family function. Not at all aware of the impending doom. I was outside going on a jog with my uncle who ran ahead. I saw the text and immediately felt a pit in my stomach, but then thought to myself. If this is real there is nowhere to go for safety. Apostrophe. So then I did what any sane person would do and continued my jog and enjoyed the beauty of Hawaii. If the threat was real. You might have been one of the last people to enjoy Hawaii for a while. There's some tardigrades that might have found it pleasant the next day. I arrived on Moi a few days after the fact. My first stop was up to the Moi Brewing Company location up by Lahaina. I met a great couple from Idaho that was sitting at the bar. They had been there the day of the infamous text. I asked them what they did. They said they had sex, took a shower, and then got in their best clothes that they had with them. Then, they just sat and waited to die. What a horrible way to think you were gonna go. I bought them each a drink and went on my way. What I've wondered is how long did these types of people think it would take? Clearly the mist is past any defense mechanisms for them to send an alert. Because if the government could keep it hush hush we almost got nuked they would. Look at all the times in the cold war nukes almost happened, albeit never actually fired but almost were, and the governments literally thought they were, that no one knew about until decades later. If nukes got past the defenses, it'd be a matter of minutes at absolute most, probably seconds in reality. By the time you finished reading the alert, I'd give it 5 minutes at most. If I'm all good then false alarm. Google says that, if a nuke was fired from Russia it would take 30 minutes. To be completely honest I slept through the warning and had no idea about it until after the panic had passed. That's honestly probably for the best if it was real. Unless you have some bomb shelter for some reason. Imagine spending the money and the time to build a bomb shelter at your home. Stocked up on supplies, radio, food, the whole nine yards. But you slept through the warning text, slept through the message saying false alarm, only to wake up having to reanalyze your whole life. My dad was managing an engineering project and him and his workers were outside on a massive tank. He said they all got the text and they were in disbelief. But my dad just said alright. Well, nowhere we can hide. Let's go on top of the tank and see if we can see this thing coming. Apostrophe. So they did. He said he still didn't believe it as they stood on top of the tank waiting and watching the horizon. Yet he still had a slight panic that his life was over. That's crazy. On one hand, it takes some serious balls no to just panic and try to find some way to escape. On the other hand, what the duck else do you do, lol. I woke up to it and went back to sleep thinking it was a flood warning. At that moment of wait a minute, 
what the fuck, and looked at it again. Woke up my boyfriend, and was like hey we need to go. He wanted to die in bed, and I said duck that. We're going to North Shore, and we'll steal a boat or some shit. Then the place we live started describing the missiles. Attention. There are two intercontinental ballistic missiles headed for Ohu. You have 6 minutes to seek shelter, and it repeated that again. I tried to get him to leave, but he won't, so I just accepted my fate standing in our bedroom pissed the duck off. For reference. I live 20 ish miles north from Honolulu, and felt that we definitely had a chance if we left immediately. I was living in Hawaii at the time. I was asleep, but my friend came to my house to tell me what was going on. We lived on a military base so the siren was going off for quite a while. It was really unsettling. We asked a cop driving by what was happening, and he told us to stay inside. We went back inside, and I made blueberry pancakes. It wasn't like you could evacuate the island, so I just had the attitude of this is bigger than me, and accepted my fate I guess. Well at least you made a good meal. That for all you knew, was quite possibly your last. We were at Disney's Olany Resort on vacation. Just arrived. I figured if a bomb was coming, I was gonna die. Which made me kinda sad. The staff ushered everybody outside of the towers. But it was clear that Disney has like... No plan for what to do in a nuclear emergency, which all in all, fair, I've been at peace with my death for years, so it was just, kinda chill, bit of topic, but how did you come to be at peace with your death? I'm going through a crisis right now where all I can think about is the impending doom that is death, you know, how everyone I love is going to die, I'm going to die, and then my name is stick around for maybe two generations. And after that the world will move on as if I never existed. Once again. Off topic but thought I might as well reach out. I was raised in the church. And I've always believed in a world to come. But I think, even if I'm wrong on that account. Dying is just the way things are. Ick now. Death anxiety is totally normal. But all the fretting in the world isn't going to out one more second on the clock for me. So I just don't think about it. I'm not going to be able to do everything I want to before I die, and I'm not going to waste my time rigorously scheduling every second to try to get maximum value out of it. I just try to spend my time with people I love doing things I love. Is it safe to come out yet? There's a brand new thing called cyberpunk. Also, there's a virus going around. The world has changed brother slash sister. I'm just stay where I'm then. Cyberpunk sounds quite dangerous. Thank you for the warning. I got that message a few months after the event, while driving in Idaho. LOL must have felt strange. While I was with my father and we were both like WTF. Apostrophe. I was visiting my brother in another state. His fiance was living in Hawaii on a military base. When news hit of this it was while just sitting there thinking we can do nothing but wait. It was so relieving to realize it was a false alarm. Shortly after our mom called us and told us our grandma was losing consciousness and when she would wake up she was delirious. She passed away the next day literally as I was boarding the plane to come home. My mom called me to let me know so I wouldn't land and have horrible news. Zero tenths wouldn't do that vacation again. It's been 3 years. Jesus Christ. Time flies. That caught me off guard. 3 years older. Fuck. Mine is kinda sad. I had just arrived to go from Oho with my fiancé when my brother, who was still on the island, called me basically saying he loved us, and he was sorry that he wouldn't be around for the future. He was crying, and scared and in disbelief. It broke our hearts. We were just two people and this was out of our control. It's like what can you do, or say when you know you're about to die. Yeah, no. It was probably one of the most memorable gut-wrenching ready to throw up type feelings I've ever had. I remember reading a story about a dude who had consensual sex with his sister because they thought they were about to die. So they were both like what the hell. Why not? I want to know how the two of them have been. I love how people from Hawaii just stayed calm, embraced their fate, and just kept living their lives and enjoying what they were doing. I mean, I get stressed and hate life if the internet is slow. Same. I'm usually an anxious wreck. But when shit hits the fan I'm cool as a cucumber. It's like my brain goes oh shit. 
Something actually bad is happening. Ah, uh, you're on your own. And I just get on with it. A lot of people who freak out over small shit tend to handle crisis well. It's like the anxiety has been training them for that moment. Lol. It was early morning. Gorgeous blue sky. At the time there was a lot of tension with MK. When the alert came out it was the emergency alert you get on your cell phone. The scary part was that it said this is not a drill. I got it on my Verizon phone, but my wife didn't on her app phone. We turned on the TV news, but it was just normal news nothing important. No emergency broadcast. I immediately jumped on slash r slash hawaii, and in a minute or two people were posting about it. She started seeing stuff in Twitter. We had a one year old with zero long pants or anything warm yard want your kid in, if you're staying at a bomb shelter 4 days. It had just been Christmas, so we put her in. A little Santa Claus outfit as that was the only long sleeves long pants warm thing she had. We run water in the tub and sinks. We started filling a cooler outside with fresh water. Several neighbors were military and navy marines as we live right by Kanya marine base at the time. They were throwing go bags in their cars and heading out somewhere. I assume base. After about 30 minutes news picked it up and started showing people putting their kids in manholes and stuff. About 45 minutes later we got an all clear message on the news and then one on our phones. I cold and help but think during it though that NK may have a nuke but more than likely it's on some shitty rockets Russia sold them from Ukraine stick piles and NK will not have a guidance system that could hit Texas at the range from there to high. I figured it was a shot feed lobbed up over Japan see that somehow took a flat trajectory instead of a high parabolic and somehow that triggered the alert. I figured it would end up in the drink. So yeah sick to your stone ash for the first 10 minutes then kinda yeah. This is probably a NK fuck up. Not WW3. Manholes. What a brilliant idea. I'd probably die. That idea is fantastic. The problem with manholes is that if the bomb explodes close enough to you all the water inside the sewers would instantly boil and cook you alive. It was about 5 minutes of heart pounding fear, but then we all started to slowly be more and more skeptical. Nothing from Hawaii government slash municipalities online. No sirens, etc. Eventually got the all clear. But after about 45 minutes. It was early morning. I was downstairs with my 2 year old. She was dancing to a Bruno Mars music video we had on TV. I read the text and kind of chuckled to think that my family was going to die with a Bruno Mars song in the background. Then I felt really sad because my daughter had so much life to live ahead of her. And I was looking forward to many more years with my wife. Decided to go upstairs so we could all be together as a family in our final moments. I picked up my daughter and headed upstairs to tell my wife. Her phone was downstairs with us, so she did not receive the message. I thought to myself you should probably research slash look into this a little more before you panic, wife, unnecessarily. So I googled it and saw the tweets from emergency management saying it was a false alarm. Felt intense relief after that. It was the most surreal feeling I have ever had. Because everything just felt so out of my control. Made me realize. That we are small and our individual problems don't mean that much in the grand scheme of things. When your life can just end like that from something totally beyond your control. If it's not a missile it could be a natural disaster. Or a car wreck. Or some kind of freak accident. Made me appreciate the time I do. Have because it can be taken away so quick and unexpectedly. Good thing you did your research. You spared your wife a very unpleasant experience. Yeah she world freaked out. I was in Koei with my family and my girlfriend at the time. Tensions were high between the US and North Korea so, when we got the text and heard the sirens we 100% believed it. We were in a resort and people were panicking everywhere. Checking with the front desk they just laughed and told everyone to calm down, as they have been doing these tests a lot lately. We turned on every news station we could and couldn't tell if it was a test or real. I grabbed my switch and went into the bathroom and started playing games. Because if I was going to die it was going to be in peace. We are all good now. The girlfriend broke up with me shortly after that trip, not because of the missile, and I started my full time job post college. The family is also good, not having been blown up by a nuclear missile and all. Not me but one of my friends was spending time there 
since it's winter in New England. We called him as soon as we heard about it and he really couldn't do much. He hid in the closet of his hotel room with his GF and waited there. He had a little trauma, but he's fine now. I lived in Japan at the time and got a warning message. I continued playing DND after a weird pause to discuss if we could do anything about it. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more videos.